This is problem number four from section 5.1. It says, using rectangles whose height is given by the value of the function at the midpoint of the rectangle, rectangle's base, the midpoint rule, estimate the area under the graph of the following function, using two and then four rectangles. So they want us to use the midpoint rule to find this, this area. So here's how we go about doing this. First thing we want to do is we want to use the midpoint formula using two and four rectangles. So we want to draw the graph of each. So we want to draw the graph using two rectangles and then draw the graph using four. Now this graph is from negative four to four. All the other graphs that we've done before were in uh, the quadrant one. This is going to be in the quadrants both two and uh, one and two. So let's go ahead and draw this. And I'll mark negative 4 here and 4 here. And if I plug in negative 4 into this function, negative 4 squared is uh, 16. 16 minus 16 is 0. So this function is evaluated there. And then obviously 4 in there, 4 squared, uh, 16. 16 minus 16 is also 0. But if I plug in the midpoint here between negative 4 and 4, the halfway point, because we're going to have the same widths for our rectangles, that would be 0. And when I plug in 0, I get 16. So I'm going to mark up here that this is 16. And then you'll see that this graph should look like this. All right, now if we're going to use the midpoint formula, they say use the rectangle's base, so our base is going to be four wide for each of these. They want us to use the midpoint of the rectangle's base, where the midpoint of this one is negative two, and the midpoint of this one is two, and that's going to be a, what our height is for our rectangle. So this is how the midpoint formula works. You go right here to where it touches the, the function, you go ahead and draw your rectangle. And you'll see your width is 4. Your height is whatever f of 2 is. When you plug in 2 into that function, whatever that height is, that's what you'll, uh, that's, or whatever that number is, that's your height. Same thing here. We go to the midpoint where it touches. Draw a rectangle across. And uh, we have our two rectangles. And you'll see that we're missing some area here, but it's kind of making up for it here, which is what's nice about the midpoint rule is you get a better estimation than your lower sum or your upper sum. Okay, let's go ahead and draw the four, the graph for the four rectangles. I'm going to use a little bit of space here. And we're going to mark this as 16 again. This is negative 4. This is 4. We know we get the same exact parabola. All right, then we're going to split this into 0. This is 0, so we split it in half. But we split those in half, which was negative 2 and 2. And so in our first part of the problem, <clears throat> rectangle 1 and rectangle 2, we'll label these. Their widths were 4. Now our rectangles are going to be uh, split into widths of 2. So we've got uh, width of 2 here, width of 2 here, width of 2 here, width of 2 here. Rectangle 1, 2, 3, and 4. We want to get their midpoints, though. So the midpoint for this problem, um, I'm just going to kind of draw this here. That's a negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3. I'm going to go up and from this spot here, mark the midpoint, draw my rectangle. Mark the midpoint here, draw the rectangle. Again, midpoint, 
So it touches, and this is kind of off just a little bit, so I'm going to kind of drag that in a little bit. My rectangle should have the same height there. Kind of jacked up the graph. And then again, midpoint. So you guys get the idea. This should be symmetrical on each side. I'm not the greatest freehand drawer in the world. All right. This is rectangle one, two, three, four. So let's go ahead and start evaluating these. Once we have the graphs or the graphs drawn, now we have a good uh, good idea of what we're trying to accomplish. We can start to um, find the areas for each rectangle. So the area for rectangle one here. Uh, the area for rectangle 1 is going to be the width, which is 4, times f of negative 2, which is its height. So we're going to say that that's going to equal, so area equals 4 times, and I just need to evaluate what f of negative 2 is. These are pretty easy to, to define. I'm going to write all of these over here. I'm going to say that this is f of negative 2. If I plug in negative 2 into that function, negative 2 squared is 4, so 16 minus 4 is 12. So I can write this as 4 times 12. We know 4 times 12 to be 48. All right. The area for rectangle 2 is going to be 4 for its width times f of 2. Now you're going to see this is kind of nice that we're using a quadratic because we know f of 2, so area equals 4 times, we know f of 2 is going to be the exact same as f of negative 2. So f of 2 we plug 2 in there, 2 squared, 4, 16 minus 4 is 12. So we get 4 times 12, which is 48. So then, uh, we now have our two areas, so our total area. under curve is 48 plus 48. We know 48 plus 48 is uh, 96. So our total area using the two rectangles is 96. So now let's look at what we would have if we had four rectangles. So let's go ahead and say the area of rectangle 1 is going to be the width, which is its 2, times f of negative 3, because that's where our height is, right? So we're going to say f of negative 3. So that's 2 times, I plug in f of negative 3. When I plug in negative 3, I get uh, negative 3 squared, 9, 16 minus 9 is 7. So 2 times 7, which is 14. Area of rectangle 2, I get 2 times f of negative 1. So I get 2 times, if I plug in negative 1, into the function, negative 1 squared, 1, 16 minus 1 is 15. So 2 times 15, which we know is 30. So the area of rectangle 3 then, now it's symmetrical on each side, so technically we could just say that this is 30 as well, because it's uh, symmetrical to rectangle 2, but we might as well go through the process. 
that we've been going through, and we'll say two times we plug in f of one, one squared is one, 16 minus one is 15, and you'll see we get two times 15, which is 30. And finally, area of rectangle four, this should be the exact same as rectangle one. Uh, we get two times f of three, f of three, we know to be three squared is nine, 16 minus nine, seven. Two times seven, which is uh, 14. Okay, so our total area under curve is going to equal 14 plus 30 plus 30 plus 14, which is 60, and uh, 60 plus 28 would be 88. And so we can see that the area obviously changed between the two and the four rectangles. The four rectangles gives you a closer approximation, and if you continue to use more and more rectangles, you'll get a better and better approximation for the area under the curve.